Okay, I think we'll get started. Um, the first thing I'm going to say to you is, I, I don't know if others have um, uh, been involved with uh, worship services or, or online virtual um, activities. Uh, usually, the hosts will mute you all, and um, Lindsay and I talked about that, and we're going to, you guys got to help me out here, though. This is going to take all of us um, to... Be careful of your background noise, but we want to kind of leave it open that you can, um, we're, we're all unmuted until our first opening hymn. Um, there's a reason I, I wanted us to have a time that we are going to be able to greet each other and then we're going to mute you. That's very powerful, you know, the, the, that, uh, that mute thing. <laughs> But anyway, um, we're going to do that. So um, I'm going to start with just a few announcements. And I, I'm, I know you're all shocked. Here we are, Erie Beach, and I'm, I'm doing announcements. But just a, a very few things. Um, one, I talked about first about our muting. Please, please just, you know, be careful of, um, know, that, know that everything you say, we can hear. How about that? That'll, that'll make sure you guys be quiet, won't you? Um, also, um, uh, I wanted, some of you were asking about good cop, bad cop, and I'm pretty sure that bad cop is going to make an appearance. So you got to pay attention and you'll figure out when that's going to happen. So that's, that's pretty cool. The other thing I want to do, and this is going to be really interesting. I wasn't sure if I was going to do this or not, but I think I will. I want you all, we're all going to practice something. Um, I'm going to show you um, a sign, okay? It's a sign that is going to be something like, well, for all you Trekkies out there, you know, the live long and prosper sign. It's going to be sort of a sign that maybe we'll catch on and maybe we'll use in this whole year to come till next year at Erie Beach. And it's a sign for bond, or connection, or feeling united. And I'm gonna show you, and I know you're gonna feel silly at home doing this, but you're gonna do it for me, I know it. I'm gonna envision you all doing it. I want you to all put your, your hands up like you're doing the okay, okay? Like this. And I can't see any of you, I'm just envisioning you all doing this, okay? Rain Turner, you better be doing it. Yes. <laughs> okay, good. All right, and then I want you to join them together. Oh, that's new. Okay. So here it is. You're 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 doing okay. Okay. And then you join them together. And this is the sign for bond or for connection, for belonging and uniting. And I think that that would be really nice because we're going to get to a, a part where we're actually going to see each other in, in person and we're not going to be able to maybe touch or embrace um, but this could be our sign for we are bonded, we are connected, and I I think that'd be awesome. So I'm gonna do I'm gonna get you to do it a few times during this service. So you might want to practice. I wish I could see you all, but we're gonna practice the sign for connected and united. Um, and I'm gonna kind of go from there, and I'm gonna show you um, some pictures in a minute. My want for this service was to connect us as an Erie Beach community, but also connect us to um, our mission. And in our mission, we have a ca camping is uh, a privilege and a wonderful experience for so, so many of us. And um, right now, there are many that are feeling um, a loss of not being able to be together and a loss of our camping program. So I contacted uh, a few people, directors and people connected to other camps and our mission. And I want you to sort of like a roll call, be able to see uh, pictures and, and a little caption of some of the other camps. So Lindsay will start us in a, as we move to the next slide and you'll see a picture that was submitted by Carrie Richards to me uh, from McGowan's Lake. And the capture of that, uh, the caption of that is the power of many. And we'll move on to the next, the next picture 
is a picture that was sent to me from Nancy Brookshaw from Zion Terrio. A little piece of heaven on earth. And the next one came from, uh, the first one came from Jen Peterson. And that is um, from Kids Camp. And that's also at Zion Terrio. As well as um, a picture t uh, from um, the f a Healing and Freeing of the Spirit reunion at Zion Terrio. That came to me from Becky Gribsby. And the last one uh, from Naranto. Those that share in uh, experiences at Naranto, whether it be senior high, reunion, many uh, activities, will um, cherish that picture of the chapel in the woods. And then uh, the next slide, we'll come back to um, Erie Beach. I was reading some things about um, services and worshiping together. And something that I read talked about the importance of the welcome. And I never thought about this quite in the same way. Um, as after I read this, about how important the welcome is. And I read this, it said that the welcome needs to be powerful. And you think about that for a minute, you know, how we all kind of greet each other and say hello, and then we get on with it. But they talk, they talk about the welcome being powerful. Powerful and having a purpose and filled with compassion and having a vision, and I thought, oh my gosh, wow, that's a lot of things that need to be in a welcome. And as I was thinking about that, and as I was thinking about welcoming you, you here and greeting you here to the table, what kept coming to my mind was uh, the need for us to bring people in prayer, how that can be powerful and how that can be filled with compassion and purpose. And this morning, we do have uh, some people that we need to bring for prayer. And I want you to listen to the names that I'm going to read, but I also want you to have a, tar a turn. This may be difficult, so we're going to have to be patient. If there are others that you want me to uh, bring in prayer, you can... Um, uh, let me see, courteously, I guess that's the word I want, <laughs> wait um, and for each other and we will, um, we will bring them to pr for prayer. I have, uh, first I have um, Kaylee, which uh, is a friend of Amanda White's. She uh, is having some difficulties after um, giving birth and uh, Amanda has asked us to have her for prayer. I want to add Dolores Taylor. I want to add Pat Brown, Paula Farrell. Is there any others? I also have the Stanley family, but I will, um, and we will, um, um, talk about that in, in a moment. Is there any others? Could you add, please, Dolores Adams? Her husband, Bill, passed away two weeks ago. Yes, thank you. Dolores Adams. Hi, Kelly. Hello. Yeah. I also want to add Muriel Hotham. Okay, thanks. Yeah, okay, thanks. Bye, bye. Okay, bye. Willie Malott. Adding Willie Malott. Please. 
I'd like to add my uh, niece, Rosie Pisaski. Rosie Pisaski. I'm also adding um, Pat Lewis's neighbor, Aliyah. I hope I'm saying that right, Pat. Patty Ricks from Ottawa. Paula Tight. And from Lori Moutre, both my Claytons. Kelly, could we add um, all the people who care uh, for our campgrounds? All the key people who care for all of our campgrounds. There's still maintenance to do, and I'd like to add them to the list. Yes. Thank you, Brian. If there are no others, I want you all to just take a minute and realize what just happened. So in our welcome and our greetings to each other, the multitude of people that um, we all of a sudden came to our hearts is very uh, special to us and unique to us. Um, I um, was very, um, what's the word? Sure, I guess that this is what needed to be happened this morning as well. And if there are no other names, I'm going to ask you if you would bow with me uh, as we say a prayer um, on all of the names that have been shared with us this morning. Um, there are many, and there are many that maybe haven't been said out loud. I know that there are many struggles, and I'm feeling deeply the struggle for the Stanley family. And I know that there are connections. There are people who know them well, and there are people that maybe know of them, but we all can share in that kind of pain that maybe that is, is happening right now in their family, as well as many, many others. So if you could just bow with me as we are going to join together in a, in a prayer on all of the names that have been shared. Oh God, this morning we come to you connected to each other, bonded and united together, lifting up those who are in our hearts and in our minds and in our, our spirits that we know if we give them over to you that you will be pleased. We know, God, that you are in their lives. You are working and moving and healing and being present when you are needed. And God, we are so grateful for that. Many of, you, many of us rely on your spirit in our lives and we appreciate even a tiny bit what that means. God, these people are suffering in various ways and you know all of them. We thank you, God, for the love that we feel unconditionally from you. We ask you from our hearts to be with those that we love and that we care for, be with them in whatever the way that they need, and please, God, make them aware of your presence, aware of that peace and that healing that comes only from you. We thank you, God, for all that you already are doing and already have done. And we thank you for all things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. At this point, we are, um, and we're going to mute you all.
And we're going to uh, be led in a song by Ken Barrows. I have decided to follow Jesus. Good morning, everyone. What I'd like us to do, I'm not sure how the words are here, uh, but there are three verses in the hymnal. And uh, after we get to that third verse, I want us to sing the first verse again. And now uh, just follow me on that because I may change the tempo a little bit. Okay, so here we go. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. I'm going to ask Rebecca Peterson now to unmute herself, and she's going to share with us in a, a reading that we have read a, a few, more than once at reunion, and that does seem to touch us um, at our campground. Thank you, thank you, Rebecca. We all of us build houses from for our dreams: the masonry and lumber, glass and tiles, a solid form wherein we see our hopes, a shelter and protection for our growth. The house shall be dwell a dwelling place for courage and integrity, for love engendered, nourished by a family. Then speak of we and, and means all humankind. These walls shall represent the privacy and dignity of in individuals. The open doors are welcome to all people, all ages and all generations. The window shall keep light of inquiry, illuminating from outside and within. May all words spoken here be born of love and energy, rekindled in the hearts of those who dreamed this house, who piled the tools and paid the price to actualize the dream. May dreaming never cease for those within, who know the world to be troubled, a troubled place, but dare to struggle for imperfection, towards the brighter home, that better day. The, let memories add warmth a heritage, a quilted patchwork stitched with history of kindliness and daring for a good of funny moments, jokes and smiles and tears. This is a precious place as every home the, that shelters those who love and strive and share. Its blessing is in lives that meet within in living, learning, caring, sheltered, sheltered here. Thank you, Rebecca. Ken is now going to lead us in a, a hymn in the bulb, There is a Flower. Uh, Kelly, I'm, uh, no accompaniment on any of the hymns? No, no there isn't. I'm sorry, okay. Ken. Very good. Again, again I'm, I'm assuming everyone can hear me okay. Okay, here we go. In the bulb there is a flower, in the seed an apple tree, in cocoons a hidden promise, butterflies will soon be free. 
In the cold and snow of winter, there's a spring that wants to be unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see. There's a song in every silence, seeking word and melody. There's a dawn in every darkness, bringing hope to you and me. From the past will come the future, when it holds a mystery, unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see. In our end is our beginning, in our time, infinity. In our doubt, there is believing. In our life, eternity. In our death, the resurrection. At the last, a victory. Unrevealed until its season. Something God alone can see. Okay, am I on? Yes. We come to you, dear God, at this time, thankful for the, the chance that we have had to continue to follow you, to continue to bask in the beauties of these reunion grounds, and to think of these reunion grounds uh, from the way back at the time of W. Uh, uh, Wally, Wally, Wally Smith III. And we have gone through many changes, and we have gone through many trials and temptations but we have continued to follow you. We have come to a time where we have uh, battles to fight and we fought those battles. We have, had, we, had, we have had the water problems that we had, the shoreline protection. We have gone through times when we have torn down buildings and built new auditoriums uh, and built auditoriums and built uh, dorms. And, but at the same time, we have been thankful and we have been blessed. These reunion grounds have changed the lives of many people, including me. And we thank you, dear God, for those grounds and the preciousness that they have been and the wonders that we have uh, come through uh, during this time. We thank you at this time for the people who have cared for the grounds. Uh, such beauty that we have been able to see year after year after year. We thank you for the staff that has been welcomed from the World Church with the helps that we have received through, uh, through many of those reunions. And we have truly, truly been blessed. And there again, I thank you, dear God, for those grounds, for these grounds, and the opportunities that we have had to share over all these years. And we will continue to share in those upcoming reunions at the same time, and we will move forward, and we will continue to follow Jesus through our lives and through and because of these reunion grounds. The world has been a better place because of these reunion grounds and reunion grounds around the world. And we thank you for them. And with this, we give you and continue thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Merv. Jen Peterson is now going to lead us in a children's time. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is a, a little different children's moment. I know the children's moment of our services is often one of my favorite parts when we get to see all of those beautiful, innocent faces run up to the front of the sanctuary so that they can participate in the service. So normally, um, I would be surrounded right now with children sitting everywhere, um, maybe there would be some interaction or some pictures to show, and there certainly would be discussion. So I didn't want to leave that out. So today, as, as I do my children's moment, there will be a couple of questions that I ask. So I just ask you, as I pause, to think about those questions, or maybe turn to someone that you're sitting with or near uh, in your homes and share an answer. 
So our focus moment today is about our theme of come to the table. And I want you to think for a moment, what comes to your mind when I say the phrase, come to the table? I imagine that many of you are thinking probably about being called to the table for dinner. You might imagine your favorite meal spread out on the table with your family surrounding you as if it's like my house, you claim your particular spot at the table. You might be thinking about the conversation that you will surely have about your day or what plans you hate may have for the evening or for tomorrow. I'm sure that you would probably all agree that this is one of the nicest moments of your day. I know it is one of the nicest moments of my day. There together, we receive delicious food and drink to help sustain us. Possibly, we get some advice for our problems from the day, and maybe even there might be some forgiveness for something that you may have done wrong. Did you know that Jesus also gathered his family and friends around him at the table? When he sat with him, what do you think they may have talked about? I would imagine it is very similar to what happens when we come to our tables. I suspect the disciples would have shared the good news of their day, their struggles, and Jesus most certainly would have taken the opportunity to share advice and lessons with his most trusted friends. Now, I want you to picture the Last Supper. Often we think of the famous painting of that Last Supper where they're all gathered together when Jesus held, gathered with the people he held most dear around him so that they could eat fellowship and then give them some important instructions because he knew that his time on earth was nearing an end. They were all sitting down for the meal when Jesus told them a story. He used food and drink from the table to teach the lesson. Jesus picked up some bread and broke it into smaller pieces and said, this is my body that will be broken for you. Then he picked up the drink and said, this is my blood that will be spilled for you. Now the disciples were pretty confused. Why was Jesus talking about being broken and his blood being spilled? They were enjoying a meal together. But Jesus was warning them about what was to come. Jesus was going to be arrested, put in jail, beaten and put on a cross to die. Jesus wanted the disciples to understand why that was happening. It had to happen so Jesus could pay for our sins. He was choosing to do this for our sake. Communion simply represents what Jesus did for us. So at church we use bread or crackers to remind us that his body was broken for us and we drink juice to remember that his blood paid for our sins. We do this to remember his sacrifice for us. So when you hear the phrase, come to the table, who do you think Christ is inviting to come to the table? Jesus often ate and drank with sinners and those seen as outsiders in society. By sharing food and conversation, he showed how much he cared for people, showing that his table is one of welcome and acceptance. He is inviting each and every one of us because he wants us to accept the ultimate gift of his sacrifice so that we might be saved and have everlasting life. So today, we are invited to come to the table and to do so in remembrance of our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ. So as you take the bread and drink the wine, remember what he has done and come humbly to the table with a grateful heart. Thank you, Jen. I'm now going to light uh, a peace candle and I will invite um, Nancy Inchley. Um, she will 
be sharing our prayer for peace. God, make me a channel of thy peace, that where there is hatred, I may sow love. Where there is wrong, the spirit of forgiveness. Where there is discord, harmony. Where there is error, truth. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there are shadows, light. Where there is sadness, joy. God, grant that I may not so much seek to be comforted as to comfort, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Thank you, Nancy. As we prepare uh, ourselves to go into communion, him is, Ken is going to lead us in the hymn, Take the Path of the Disciple. Before we sing this hymn, I just wanted to say a little instructions. If we had accompaniment on this, the, there's a part that the author, uh, Randall Pratt, the composer, had designed to build in a, a, a bit of breathing space right at the end of each verse. And for those who are familiar with the tune, that last little bit after we sing the last word of the, each verse, there's a, the, the music trails off where it goes, la, 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 and then the next verse starts. And so I want to try to, we're going to sing an acapella, but I would like us to do that la, la, la at the end. So follow me. And for those who don't sing, that's fine. Just take a breather because that's what the composer intended before we start to sing the next verse. So here we go. Uh, take the path to the disciple. Call by God to make a journey in community of Christ. Learning, sharing, reconciling, seeking justice, peace, and light. Take the path of the disciple. Join the journey to new life. Seek the ways that God would lead us, the community of Christ. La, 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 la. Though the way will not be easy, and we sometimes feel alone, breaking bread our eyes are open, and we meet Christ on the road. Take the path of the disciple, join the journey to new life. Seek the ways that God would lead us, the community of Christ. La, 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 la. On the path we go together, let the Spirit gently lead. We proclaim Jesus as Savior and find joy, hope, love, and peace. Take the path of the disciple, join the journey to new life. Seek the ways that God would lead us, the community of Christ. La, 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 la. We now have a chance to prepare uh, to have communion together for those that are uh, able and um, for those that are prepared to have communion. My mom, uh, Carol Manley, will uh, lead us in uh, communion. Memories are precious. They keep us connected to people, places, and events that have shaped us and influenced our lives. May we wish we could forget some things, 
but even life's unpleasantries can offer lasting lessons learned through adversity. At the Last Supper, Jesus shared a meal with his disciples and then led them in the Passover. Jesus, the master teacher, used this opportunity to plant an important memory in his disciples gathered in that upper room. Jesus shared this meal for their benefit and for ours. As Jesus raised the bread and the cup in thanksgiving, he added new significance to this ancient ritual. He told his disciples to observe the Passover. So as we are preparing to observe and to share, I would ask that you uh, prepare to receive the bread and in the way that you will would do whether you kneel or whether you just close your eyes or whether you just appreciate the time spent, I will ask you to take your bread. You take your bread and as you receive it, I will read the prayer that has been given to us. O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it, that they may eat in remembrance of the body of thy Son. And witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son, and always remember him and keep his commandments which he has given them, that they may always have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. And having received the bread, we will prepare to take up the cup. So as you take your cup, I will once again read to you the prayer on the cup that has been given to us. And it says, O God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this cup to the souls of all those who drink of it, that they may do it in remembrance of the blood of thy Son which was shed for them, that they may witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they do always remember him, that they may have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. We will share from the cup. I will now ask uh, John Shear, who is going to uh, share with us in the Ministry of Music. As the winds swung through the trees, as the stirring of the breeze, so it is with the Spirit of God, as the heart made strangely warm, as the voice within the storm, so it is with the Spirit of God. Never seen, ever known, where this wind has blown, bringing life, bringing power to the world. As the dancing tongues of fire as the soul's most deep desire, so it is with the Spirit of God. As the rainbow after rain, as the hope that's born again, so it is with the Spirit of God. As the green in the spring, as a kite on a string, so it is with the Spirit of God. 
making worlds that are new, making peace come true, bringing gifts, bringing love to the world. As the rising of the east, as the wine at the feast, so it is with the Spirit of God. Thank you so much, John. As we uh, go into our morning message, I want to invite Brian uh, Jackson to speak. Um, I think, Brian, before we uh, do that, though, I think everybody needs to uh, practice our connected and our bonded united sign. So just so you know, I figured out how I can see you. So if you're not doing it, I can also see that. So if you try, uh, let's do our bonded sign, because I feel that that has already taken place uh, this morning. Brian? Yeah. Good morning. Do a little sound check. Kelly, give me a thumbs up if you can hear me there. Good. Thank you. Um, first of all, wow. Um, thank you, John, and thank you, Ken, for sharing your music. It's so beautiful, and it brings such a spirit, at least to us, um, that it's very nice that we can share in this way virtually. So I love that. Um, Kelly did mention uh, that, you know, bad cop might show up. So I, I, I do want to say a couple of bad cop things. Now, for those of you who may not be familiar, at Erie Beach, uh, bad cop typically looks after things that, that help keep us safe um, and, and keep us uh, comfortable at our reunion. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to say is, um, and I don't know if Roger's online, but don't feed the geese. Um, so we know the past couple of years we've had geese coming to reunion. They've kind of been part of us. Uh, this year, uh, so far, so good. Uh, John and Donna actually put a little rope up. So if you happen to stop by the campground, you might see a little rope along the shoreline with some flags on it. And that is really to keep the geese off, which it's been pretty effective so far. So, so that's good. So, uh, you know, Rebecca, don't go out there and feed the geese. Just stay away. Um, the second thing I want to talk about just in, in terms of staying safe is obviously in these um, unprecedented times, uh, you know, that keeps us apart. Um, just a reminder, uh, you know, of the importance of continuing, uh, obviously, the physical distancing, uh, hand hygiene, and, and wearing masks, and other other requirements, uh, you know, that are that are depending on where you are, uh, that might be there. So, it's just a reminder. I know at the campground we would talk about, you know, driving slow and making sure you wear shoes and that sort of stuff. But uh, in this environment, those are very important in, in keeping everybody safe and healthy. And I really hope um, that everybody is uh, safe and healthy now. And I do want to put in a, a shameless plug here uh, for our campgrounds and facilities. Um, th there's a lot of people that are still doing work, even though we're not using them. And, and it is still beautiful to go out there, but it's strange that there aren't people around. It's strange that the buildings are vacant and the grounds are vacant, but they're still there and they still require work. And I know Wayne uh, is going to share more about that in the offertory. So please, and I know uh, during this period, there's been lots of financial struggles uh, for people, and I know it's tough, but, um, you know, if you do have uh, extra money available, uh, keep the campgrounds in mind, and all of the campgrounds, you know, Erie Beach uh, for us, but obviously the other campgrounds as well will be in, in similar boat. There's still things and bills that have to be paid, so please uh, don't, don't forget that. It is a pleasure to join you this morning uh, in this virtual gathering. And, and I do want to uh, start out by, first of all, giving a shout out uh, to our leadership for putting this together, for putting the e-camping program together so that we can meet and still gather and feel connected um, as, we, as we visit in this way. Um, because we are still able to meet and community build. It's just done a bit differently. And I really appreciate the effort uh, that's gone into it from our leadership to bring everybody together and to involve and include everybody. That's, it's just been awesome. It's just really been good. And I think if you were to go around the uh, virtual room here and ask people, what's the number one thing that you've missed uh, during these unusual times? And I think yeah, a very common answer would be uh, social interaction. We really miss being together and coming together and seeing each other. And, and, and particularly, I know for me, when, when we greet people, we're so accustomed to giving each other hugs and, 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 and shaking hands and, and, and being in touch with everybody. And, we, uh, Michelle and I, really miss that part, even with our, even with our families. 
we're so accustomed, you know, to that community building environment in our camps and in our camp settings that are really, you know, set up that way so that we can come together and be there, share, and, and really, really miss that. And it's uh, difficult to do that, you know, when we have to uh, be physically distanced. Um, it's a requirement to keep us safe when we're required to wear a mask that hide our faces so we can't see the, the smile or the expressions on the faces. And to me, and, and Michelle as well, it really makes us realize the value of our camps and reunions. And, and a shout out to, you know, just to remember, I, I, I'm so super pumped to see all the pictures from the various campgrounds. And thank you, you know, for sharing those. You know, Zion Ontario and Naranto and McGowan's Lake, all, all run events during that bring us all together. And, and obviously Erie Beach, uh, which is near and dear to our heart, you know, is kind of our home campground. But many of us, in fact, all of us have probably had experiences at all these campgrounds that keep us together. And it's just so amazing to have these as, a, as an asset, as part of our toolbox for community building, where we can gather in those safe places and build community. And today at Erie Beach, which this would be our week of reunion, um, this day we would be all gathered in the, in the auditorium sharing in communion, probably watching one of uh, Kathy's videos of memories uh, from the week that we built. And a shout out to Kathy, she does an incredible job every year. And I've, I've so enjoyed, uh, I know Kelly posted on our Facebook page to share pictures of memories and saw a lot of those pictures in, in the slideshow, uh, you know, leading up to this, a lot of those pictures in the background of of those who have gone before us and done so much work there and those who are there today and in the present, uh, keeping things running. And of course, the future uh, with all of our youth and, and children that are connected to the campground. It's so exciting to watch that. And we really miss that, that kind of coming together. But today, as Kelly suggested, and as Jen has shared in the children's time, today we want to share and invite you to the table. And what I want to talk about and start out talking about this morning is a particular table that's important uh, in, in my life and Michelle's life every year at Reunion and really try and relate how those tables are used and how that can relate to our lives and how we live our lives and how uh, we can do that in following the example that was given to us by Jesus. And these tables that I wanna talk about um, are used for gathering for a variety of purposes. This morning we've already shared together uh, using this virtual table for communion. Which, is, which was awesome, I really enjoyed that. But I want to reflect about this table that each year at Erie Beach Reunion is important to us and relate to the activities that take place around that table. Um, you know, as, as Jan said earlier, what do you think about when you say come to the table? And I also wanna use that to remind us of some of those incredible activities that we share in community building uh, at, at Erie Beach Reunion, as well as the other reunions. And hopefully this will also bring about memories of your own experiences around your table at your camp or your reunion. So every year when we show up, it's, it's kind of become a tradition now. Uh, we reserve, you know, we talk to uh, Fran and we reserve two picnic tables. Now I'm gonna explain why we reserve two. Um, actually, we, we reserve one for, for John and Donna and we reserve one for Michelle and I, but we really do need those two picnic tables. And I'll explain that in, in a minute. But those two tables are placed together end to end under the shade of a, a beautiful large sycamore tree that provides shade for us all throughout the day. And they're put in front of the, the gate cottage uh, where John and Donna stay and kind of off to the side where our motor home is. So it's kind of like a little compound there with these two picnic tables uh, in the center. And they are the center of many activities, not just for our families, but for many other things. As Jen mentioned earlier, the obvious one is meals. You know, we eat all of our meals at these tables, breakfast, lunch, and supper. And really, one thing that's kind of struck me when I was thinking about this is, when you really think about it, there's always different people at every meal. It, it never really seems to be just the same set. Now, of course, the four of us are there. John, Donna, Michelle, and I are usually there most of the time. I know John might occasionally wander off to, to take care of something in the dining hall or whatever, but the four of us are usually there sharing. And on any given day, there's a different people. There's sometimes some of our, our children, which obviously are now not necessarily children, but and grandchildren that might visit. They might come on a weekend. They might come during the week and you know share with us. We also have invited guests, such as friends and relatives. I know I'll give a shout out to uh, Randy and Inger, our, our good friends in the U.S. There, um, you know, they come over to the table sometimes and share. Uh, Graceland reps that we've had at the camp in the past, we've had them over for, for a meal to share together and just eating food and sharing. 
And there's always, always, always a bowl of fresh fruit or licorice or some sort of snack there all day long. And I know many of you have probably wandered by and, and been offered a snack. Um, Donna puts out lots of baked goodies there. So there's always some food there to kind of gather around and, and share, which is really neat. These tables are placed together as we head to our next activity. And there's so many activities during the week. Kelly and, and the reunion organizing team do a fantastic job. And again, I'm, I'm sure all the other reunions are, are similar. But, um, you know, if we're heading down to the beach to swim, we always love swimming. Actually, I don't know if you can see my shirt. And we love our lake. Um, we love going down there. We love the waves. We love swimming in there. We'll put our beach towels and our bags and our hats and our sunscreen and our sunglasses. We'll set them all out on the table as we prepare to head off to the beach. Oh, and don't forget, we make sure that we have some uh, loose change for the canteen to get those, uh, those good drumsticks or down at the beach or ice cream. So that's good. We might use those tables to, to put our name tags, you know, as, as having responsibilities at reunion. Uh, Kelly organizes and gives everybody a name tag so, so everybody will know who we are. Um, maybe in case I get lost, don't know where to send me back or something. But uh, we'll put books and materials uh, that we're going to use for the next community gathering. We'll put them on those tables just, just to kind of get ready and get set to head off to that activity. Uh, usually during the week, at least once, um, we'll do laundry. Um, and we gather up all the laundry uh, from, from our family and, and John and Donna and Michelle or I will go in and, and get that done at the laundromat in town. When we come back, we use a table to set the laundry out to, to sort it. There's sports equipment. We prepare for volleyball over at our, our beach volleyball court uh, over off to the side by the dining hall. Or perhaps we're going for a baseball game. We'll put the baseball equipment out there. Or there's uh, tailgate golf or all these other games that we play, frisbees, that sort of stuff will be put out on the table to prepare for those sorts of activities. And then, of course, as is our tradition, um, has been over the last few years, on the, on the last Saturday of camp, we'll have a, a community picnic and a family day. And we will prepare stuff. We'll put stuff out there, salads and, and things that we're going to take over to the picnic, lean our lawn chairs so that we can go over to the peace pad and gather with everybody for just a, just a wonderful morning. It usually turns out just to be a lot of fun. A lot of great things happen. I've seen a lot of pictures of, uh, and I'm sure many of us on the call or on the meeting have had the uh, opportunity to have shaving cream in our face and that sort of stuff, which is all good fun. And those tables are also space used to mentally prepare for our responsibilities. Reviewing talks, perhaps, for, for classes that we might be teaching or going to worship and what we're going to share in worship, whether that's an offertory or the talk, you know, we'll sit at those tables and prepare for that. We'll review music that will be shared. Now, fortunately for you, I usually don't sing a lot, but we know John has a beautiful voice and, and Josh has, you know, played guitar, various things. They'll practice, you know, around that table just, just to be prepared. We put together, you know, videos and PowerPoints on the computer at that table that we might take into the auditorium that are used for worship and sharing. And the wonderful PowerPoint that's being shared this morning with all the pictures is an example of that. That we'll we'll get that stuff all ready to make sure it works so that when we take it over to the auditorium, we can just plug it in. And there's also lots of other events that, that planning happens for. Um, the lifeguards and the lifeguard equipment. And I know I saw Riley on the, on the call there and Karsten, you know, a couple of our lifeguards. We'll, we'll prepare stuff that we take down there, the first aid kit, the, the, the defibrillator, that sort of stuff that has to be there at the waterfront for safety. We'll all be kind of organized on the table. We have a beach party every year for the, uh, for the senior high or older youth. We'll put together stuff, you know, with water and marshmallows and hot dogs and the sticks and firewood and hatchets and all that sort of stuff that we have to take down to the beach for a beach party. Getting ready for campfires. We put stuff that we need to, to make the campfire that we share in a couple times during the week. And the movie night, which we always have out by the canteen usually. We have to have a, an inflatable screen that's available that we can move out there and, and get everything set up and getting the sound system and everything ready. So the table is an important part of, of all those tasks. Now, the reason why we need two tables. This is the main reason why, because every year in the past several years, Michelle uh, has taught the six, seven, and eight-year-olds. Now, I don't know if uh, you've ever dealt with a you know, group of six, seven, or eight-year-olds together like that. I don't know how, how she does it. And, and her helpers, uh, you know, Megan and, and Anna and um, Aiden have all helped over the past few years. But typically, there will be a gathering in the youth building for the morning sharing, led by Kelly and Nancy, where and Jen and others, where the kids all go over and they share together in, in the youth building. And then they break out into their classes. So somewhere around, I forget the exact time, 10 o'clock in the morning, there will be this group of anywhere between 15 to 26, 78 year olds 
that come over and surround that table. My goodness, you want to see activity? That's that's where it's happening. There's just so much stuff going on. Um, that's where the, the kids share together in, in lessons, and, and they, they do crafts, and they have videos, and they have games and snacks. All happens kind of around that table. I know a favorite over the past couple of years has been the uh, the Coke and the Mentos where you put in and you get the big geyser coming up. The kids really seem to like that and have a lot of fun. That's all done, gathering you know around that table each day during the week. And then, of course, at the end of the week, it's a place where, uh, you know, there's stuff from the class during the week, their crafts or whatever are put out uh, for them to come and gather as well as treats uh, that they're given uh, for participating during the week. But but I think last year, I think we had about 18, uh, 18 to 20 kids there throughout the week. So it's a very busy central activity. And that's why we need the, the, the two tables. <laughs> um, lots of stuff going on. Of course, that table, and many of you have probably come and found us there, for uh, various uh, maintenance and ground activities that need fixing and repair. Um, people come to find us at that table to discuss things that might need, might need fixing. There's lights to replace, there's water leaks to take care of, there's doors to fix, there's sports equipment to, to be gotten out of the, the locked uh, storage room where we keep the sports equipment. There's you know, taking care of stocking the bathrooms with supplies and paper towels and soap and all the, all the necessary things there. Also making sure the dining hall is, is set up with what they need to, to do the stuff they do there. We have meetings to chat about concerns or projects for the grounds to consider there. I know last year we met uh, with a, a new contact who was looking at actually renting the campground. They came out during the week and we had a, a meeting there to discuss the arrangements for that. So a lot of business type transactions take place there. Arranging for garbage pickup. My goodness, if, uh, if you didn't do that, um, we all know what would happen. Uh, it would not be pretty. And obviously during the week with so many people there at, at Erie Beach, there's, there's a lot of garbage to, to be taken care of. And usually at one point during the week, we have to arrange for a pickup to make sure uh, that we don't have an overflow of garbage. And there's also meeting contractors and, and people that might have to come in, electricians or, or plumbers that might have to come in to do repairs that are a little bit beyond uh, our, our skills and stuff. So. A lot of important things about just keeping the reunion running smoothly happen at those tables. And of course, another very important function that, uh, you know, again, Michelle has, has done over the past several years uh, with the help of uh, Lois Blair, and a shout out to, to her for the support as well. And that's, that's being the camp nurse. So a lot of people will come at various points throughout the week, whether it be uh, early in the morning, late at night, during the day, with lots of things that need to be taken care of. They'll come and seek out Michelle with various uh, injuries. Fortunately, over the past several years, most of them relatively minor uh, and, and don't need a lot of uh, external help. Um, but people might not be feeling well. They might be feeling a little bit ill. They might have rashes or, you know, in the last couple of years, there's, there's been other things like, you know, ticks or concerns about that sort of stuff. A very busy place. There's always somebody coming along with, with some issue uh, that has to be taken care of and that all happens uh, around those tables and at some point during the week one of the other big things about Erie Beach that, that we do is we reach out to the community we reach out to the village of Erie Beach which for those of you who, who know the area but if you don't know the village is actually the campground kind of borders right on uh, the edge of the village and every year we invite the villagers in for a ball game uh, and a barbecue um, so uh, they, they get to come in and uh, we form two teams we share together in a barbecue and uh, then we play, we play against the villagers. And if there's not, if they don't have enough or we, we don't have, we have too many, we'll share players to make up two teams and we'll just have a wonderful time with people from the village. But at some point during the week, uh, Jim Bourne, who is our key contact, he lives in the area, works in the area. He'll see us sitting at the table and he'll pop in and he'll say hi and he'll make sure the arrangements are taken care of. All this happening around the table. And of course there's quiet time. There's times when we get around that table maybe just to strum on a guitar, uh, maybe to read books, uh, maybe to, to play cards or games, just idle uh, chit chat about how we're doing, um, or just simply socialize with others. So that also happens there. And then of course, there's celebrations. Every year at Reunion, um, we know uh, mom and dad uh, would celebrate their anniversary on July the 30th, which would happen every year. And actually this year on Thursday, I'm, I'm sure most of you know, they celebrated their 60th anniversary and unfortunately, uh, not at Reunion, not at the campground where I know they love to, uh, to be and celebrate that. And it was a great time of celebration. We also celebrated birthdays. Uh, both Josh and Ryan have birthdays in early August. 
we also celebrated with other people uh, that had birthdays. I know uh, it was uh, two years ago. I think uh, Blake Smith, who was a great Graceland rep, also had his birthday. Uh, you know, during during the week of being in. So we would have cupcakes and stuff over there, and just just share in those special moments. Uh, whether it's people sharing, uh, you know, news about you know, expecting uh, kids, uh, news of engagements or relationships. Um, news of education and successes, graduations, um, being accepted, moving on, and career development and promotions. It's really cool to just kind of sit around the table and share with each other and celebrate uh, in that way. And, and there's also greetings and goodbyes. And, and I, love, I love the sign, the connectedness. Uh, while we're sitting at that table at the start of the week, many people will stop at the table on their way in just to come over and say hi or get instruction or find out where they should go, or they have questions. And all throughout the week, as people pass by that table going and coming from the campground, there will be waves, many waves, to say hello, goodbye, as people come in and, and leave and go about their business for the week. And then, of course, at the end of the week, as people are packing up and leaving, that table will be the source of many farewells, many hugs, many uh, sharing of, of joyful memories from the week, and many waves as, as they pass by, uh, just, just in general. So I want you to reflect on all the things that take place around this table during the week, because there's a lot, a lot of stuff that happens around there, a lot of stuff that involves community building and, and being together. And I think in a way, I think our lives are like this table. And what if our lives were a table, what would it look like? Would our lives be inviting to others, you know, to receive, to come and get nourishment and energy? Would they come to us, to our life, for help and assisting to prepare for life and what's next? Would they come, would they come to us for teaching and learning? And, and that goes both ways. I, I teach and I, I get teaching and learning from, from other people who come as well, but just being together. Would, would they come to feel better? Would they come to take care of, of issues? Maybe it's uh, emotional or mental injuries or, or injuries that they want to deal with or just sharing. And, and that goes for both joy and sorrow. But do people come to us? Do they feel invited into our lives to share in that way? Would our lives be cleared and uncluttered? Those tables at reunion are always kept very neat and clean with a tablecloth. And, you know, occasionally, as I said, there might be a bowl or something there to, that invites people. Are our lives like that? Are they cleared? Are they uncluttered? Are our lives offering an open invitation to others to come join us and share with us? Would others feel invited to enter our lives and to build community? Our camping programs are really designed around this philosophy. Open to everyone and anyone. Something for everyone to participate in. Something for everyone to give. Something for everyone to receive. The table that we gathered around earlier this morning is really, in my opinion, representative of Jesus' life. And we know that Jesus did many things at a table. He shared with everyone indiscriminately. And again, you know, I'll, I'll echo off of some of the stuff that, that Jen shared earlier. He shared around the table and shared his life with, with the leaders. He shared with the Pharisees and the scribes. He shared with the rich and the wealthy and the powerful. But he also shared with the poor and the despised and the sick and the outcast. He shared with everyone. So it's important, it's important to remember that, that we must be open to, to sharing with everyone to help eliminate social injustices that exist today. And Jesus is really inviting each of us to be part of his life, to share in his love that he has for us, and to share and partake in his forgiveness that he has for each of us. So each of us is invited to this table to share, to receive, and to give the invitation to all that we meet. And we share this little scripture uh, from Luke 22, and it's uh, verse 14, and it is about the Last Supper. And it says, when the hour came, he took his place at the table, and the apostles were with him. And each of us are like the apostles. We're with him. We're with him at his table. May each of our lives be like those two picnic tables that we gather around at Erie Beach each year. May our lives be open and inviting and be used for many things to help community build. May our lives be used to share together in whatever the need of the moment is. And I really, truly look forward to seeing all of you next summer at your table or at our table. 
and we'll be connected. And I want to leave you with this with this thought. And this, I, I shamelessly stole this. There's a great video uh, on the World Church website called Tables. And the description is this, and it just it was powerful to me. And I just want to leave you uh, with this thought. When we invite someone to our table, we invite them into our lives. When we offer a person a place at our table, we open our community. So go and clear a spot at your table. Pull up some chairs. The world is waiting. Is your table ready? Thank you. Thank you so much, Brian. I appreciate you very much for many, many reasons as a friend and, and a leader of our uh, campground board. And uh, I uh, appreciate your ministry this morning. Um, I'm going to ask now Wayne Freer. He's going to uh, talk to us about our disciples' generous response and, uh, and offer prayer for us. Wayne? Good morning. This uh, is indeed an unusual time that we're going through. I think we all agree with that. Uh, not being together has many ramifications of our lives that have, have greatly changed. And as I, I thought about the campground, the campground is still there. Even though we can't physically be there together, the campground is still there. And there's a term in accounting called fixed expenses. Those are expenses that happen regardless whether there's an activity or not. And uh, there are fixed expenses at the campground. Uh, you know, it, it's about $18,000 a year for insurance on our property out there. $18,000. And we have to pay that whether we use it or not. We have to pay property taxes. And they're in the neighborhood of around $8,000 a year. So, so before we even think about anything, there's $26,000 that we're spending to allow us to meet the needs of community at the campground. A lot of those expenses are met through our reunion, reunion grounds activities, our reunion experience, our rentals to outside groups that are able to come in and enjoy those facilities. Those incomes are gone this year. We have our... Uh, uh, CEM uh, quotas that we receive from the campgrounds, but that's it. And so we have to look at the campground and say, well, how are we ever going to make anything happen here? This past week, we had a storm out at the campground that uh, along with the significant damage that we've been experiencing because of high water levels, took down several trees and damaged buildings. And we had shingles, a large number of shingles blown off the auditorium roof. Will some of this be covered by insurance? I don't know, but the bottom line is it's got to be fixed and that's going to cost money. We had a hydro pole come down. That's going to cost about $5,000 to replace that pole and reconnect the hydro. Shoreline protection, we budgeted in the neighborhood, I believe it was $20,000 this year to do some shoreline protection to stop the water from taking away our our waterfront. That value may have to be increased because of the ongoing damage that has happened. This particular time in our service is called Disciples Generous Response. We all have expected monies that we, we plan on giving to our, to our charities and to our church. Generosity is over and above that which we expect to give. Generosity is doing without so that we can give. When I look at the participants online this morning, there's roughly 50 of us. And if we were all coffee drinkers, which I realize we're not, but if each of us uh, save one coffee a week, one coffee a week, $2 a week, Put that aside, that would equal about $100 a year. If each of us did that, that would be a, around $5,000 the campground could receive just by giving up drinking one coffee. 
I don't know about you, but uh, one coffee is not very much compared to what I actually drink in a week. A very, very small sacrifice would be required to allow me to give more, to be generous. There are ways of giving to the campground. As I said, we can give through our, through our campground quotas. We can sign up for PAC, pre-authorized transfers and uh, designate funding to, to the campgrounds under that, that rope. We can also send monies directly to, uh, to LAM, uh, LAM uh, accounting uh, who, who take care of our books for us. And if you do that, make sure you note on the check that the money is for Erie Beach and it will be a, assigned to the proper location. Make sure your name and address are on that check so that uh, you can receive your, your charitable donation receipt. I'm not sure if we can do this. Well, I know we can do it. Uh, I don't think it's there right now, but perhaps we can put it on our Erie Beach uh, Facebook page Lamb Accounting, it's at 7800 Pancor Line in Pancor, Ontario. Feel free to, to be more generous than what we maybe have been. Going above and beyond what is expected so that our campground will continue to be in the community that it is in, serving the community that it, it serves. Not just our community, but the communities of those who come in and use the grounds. The community of those who drive by and look at the grounds and wonder what a beautiful place like that is doing here and wondering exactly what happens there. Will you bow with me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we, we have been blessed as a people. And we know that uh, you have blessed us with the ability to have facilities that allow us to reach out and meet the needs of individuals. One of those facilities is the Erie Butch Reunion Campground. Heavenly Father, may we give generously, not only today, but throughout the days and weeks and months and years to come that the funds that are needed uh, to allow this place to be preserved, to be an enzyme to that community might be available. May they be used wisely. May they allow us to continue to provide ministry in a unique way through our camping program. I pray in your son's name, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Wayne. So maybe right before our closing hymn, we can practice our connect sign. Just a minute, I gotta, I gotta get it on so I can see you again. Uh, just a minute, I wanna see everybody. There we go. Practice our connecting sign. Everybody, good, good. And Ken is gonna lead us in our, our closing hymn. And I, I wanna thank Ken very much for uh, doing this and leading us. And your passion for music has certainly uh, come through as you lead us. And, and I appreciate it very much. Okay, we're going to sing, before we sing this uh, last one, Lord Jesus, if you I will sing. If you have your hymnal handy and you speak French, uh, I'd invite you at this time to turn to 557 in our hymnal. And that's the, this song in French. So all of you who can sing in French, kind of do that on behalf of our brothers and sisters who speak French uh, around the world and kind of connect up with them as we sing together. So here we go. Lord Jesus, of you I will sing. Lord Jesus, of you I will sing as I journey. I'll tell all my neighbors about you wherever I go. You alone give us life, give us peace, give us love. Lord Jesus, of you I will sing as I journey. 
Lord Jesus, I'll praise you as long as I journey. May all of my joy be a faithful reflection of you. May the earth and the sea and the sky join my song. Lord Jesus, I'll praise you as long as I journey. As long as I live, Jesus, make me your servant to carry your cross and to share all your burdens and tears. For you save us by giving your body and blood. As long as I live, Jesus, make me your servant. I fear in the dark and the doubt of my journey, but courage will come with the sound of your steps by my side. And with all of the people you save by your love, we'll sing to the dawn at the end of our journey. God bless. I'm going to ask Brian now to share in the benediction on our service. Um, after I say the prayer, one of the things I found with uh, virtual meetings is that everybody sign off, everybody wants to say goodbye, 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 and people all start dropping off. What I want us to do after I finish my prayer and say, oh man, before we sign off, I'd like everybody to do, this will be our sign off, this will be our goodbye, because we are truly all still connected. Would you bow with me? Dear God, we, we are indeed very thankful for this opportunity to gather together, even in these unusual times, that uh, we have the ability to still connect and share, and that your spirit can be felt, even though we might be remote and just looking at each other on a computer screen, that spirit is there. We pray this morning as we leave uh, this sharing together, this community, that we would take that spirit with us, that that spirit would continue to bless us, that that spirit will bless those who continue to care for our campgrounds, who do the work, who, who cut the grass, who clean up the branches, who, who do all that stuff, that, that that spirit would envelop them and, and give them the strength and the energy and, and the know-how to take care of that stuff for, for all of our campgrounds. We would also ask that we recognize that the campgrounds are an asset or a tool for community building, but the true asset and tool for community building is us, is our lives. And that wherever we are, whether it be at the campground or whether it be at our home or workplace or school or wherever, that we can follow your example and we can community build and we can be with each other and we can, can connect and stay connected. These things we pray in your name. Amen. Brian and I have already connected because that's exactly what I was going to have you do as I read these words of sending forth. Let us bless and keep one another. Let us let kindness rule in our hearts and compassion in our lives until we meet again. Thank you so much, everyone. And I want to share with you um, our theme for Reunion 2021, which will be Homecoming, and the star will lead us. Thank you so much, everyone, and uh, we'll see you soon.